Hi, my name is Miki. My colleagues and I found a unique chemical mechanism that promotes seed dispersal by mammals in the fruits of a desert plant. Ocradenus bacatus, or as we like to call it, Obi, is a keystone species mainly because of its juicy, fleshy fruits. Indeed, whenever I visit this plant, I always find a wide variety of organisms feeding on it. Seeds are an important part of the diet of a Comis cairinus, a murid rodent, so we were interested in studying its interaction with the Obi plant. One of the first and my personal favorite observations is of a Comis cairinus approaching the Obi plant, cutting the stem right before the fruit cluster, taking the whole fruit cluster in its mouth away from the parent plant to consume at a safe place. But what happens to the fruits? We placed motion-activated cameras in a Comis cairinus feeding site and we found that the Comis consumed the fruits, but they spit the seeds. And they weren't the only rodent exhibiting this interesting behavior. This juvenile Acomis rosatus, for example, exhibit the exact same behavior of consuming the pulp and spitting the seeds. In the laboratory, 21 out of 23 individuals of Acomis cairinus also exhibit the exact same behavior. They consume the fruits but spit the seeds. The two remaining rodents, one ate the whole fruit and the other spit the pulp and consumed the seeds. To be considered a good seed disperser, taking the fruits away from the parent plant and leaving the seeds intact is a very good start. But are these seeds vital? Indeed, we found that more than 78% of these seeds germinated successfully, and this germination rate did not differ from the germination rate of manually separated seeds. But why would a predominantly seed-predating murid rodent consume the fruits but leave the seeds intact in the process? For this, we needed to study the plant chemistry. The main role of fleshy, juicy, ripe fruits like those of the obi plants is to attract animals that will come, consume the fruits and disperse the seeds. However, there is a paradox since many fruits contain defensive chemicals, secondary metabolites that deter potential consumers. One explanation for this paradox is the direct deterrence hypothesis, which states that animals that consume the fruits and disperse the seeds will not be affected by the secondary metabolites, while animals that consume the fruits and destroy the seeds will be affected by them. Indeed, there is some evidence that birds and mammals differ in their responses to secondary metabolites. In the OB plant, we found a defensive mechanism called the mustard oil bomb. And the mustard oil bomb is made of two main components. The first are glucosinolates, which are stable components, and the other is the myrosinase enzyme, which hydrolyzes the glucosinolates into toxic products. In the plant, glucosinolates and the myrosinase enzyme are located in different compartments to avoid autotoxification. In the fruits of the OB, we found a complete compartmentalization between glucosinolates found only in the pulp and the myrosinase enzyme found only in the seeds. Thus, only animals that will consume the fruits and destroy the seeds will be affected by the mustard oil bomb, while animals that will consume the fruits and disperse the seeds will not be affected by it. And this is with agreement with the direct deterrence hypothesis. So our Acomis cairinus, by consuming the fruits and spitting the seeds, avoid the mustard oil bomb and act as a legitimate seed dispersal. Remarkably, the OB fruit contains a mechanism that deters seed predators, but not seed dispersals, even within the same species. If you want to learn more about the subject, please read our paper published in this issue of Current Biology.